Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name is John Finch. Today we're going to look at archival processing of our prints. Now this includes three stages basically and that is proper fixing, proper washing and proper post work with the print. And that could include some form of toning. I'm going to look at them succinctly. We're going to get straight to the point with each part of that process because I think these are processes that can help you in your darkroom. I tell you these things because these are things I know work. I've used these methods for decades and I know they work and will work for you. So let's get to it. Let's have a look at what I mean by proper fixing. We're going to start talking about fixing thoroughly. Now, I could call it proper fixing. That's a little bit emotive. Many of you will be sitting there saying, I already properly fix my uh, film and paper. And you probably do. But I want to talk about thoroughly fixing because it's quite an important concept to grasp. Am I properly fixing or am I thoroughly fixing? They might be two different things. So bear with me on this. Before I go into that, just remind you, use a stop bath because that helps to stop contamination getting into your fixer. And contamination from the developer into fix can cause problems up the line. So we don't want developer in our fix if we can help it. So do use a stop bath. It's the best way of making sure you're not going to get that developer into your fix and cause problems. Now, the second thing to talk about is fixing. Now, many of us might just use one fixing bath for our film and paper, and we might get away with it. And most of the time we probably do because it's fresh enough. But you have to understand what fixing is doing to see what might go wrong with using one single fixing bath. When we fix film or paper, the mm, chemistry goes through two stages. The fixer, first of all, turns the non-developed silver halides into an intermediary product. And this intermediary product is non-dissolvable. It won't go away in water. It won't dissolve in water. The fixer then does a second stage where it turns this intermediary byproduct into a dissolvable byproduct, which will dissolve and wash away. So what happens is if your fixer starts to get tired, starts to get used and becomes more and more um, rich in silver byproducts, it slows down and it slows down this conversion from the first stage to the intermediary non-dissolvable stage and to the final stage. As it slows this down, you can end up with some of these intermediary non-dissolvable byproducts in your film or paper. You put them in the wash and of course they won't go away. They are in there and they will stay in there. It will be very hard to remove those. We'll talk about strategies to remove those later, but it will be more difficult. With fresh brand new fix, it's going to do a good job because it'll go through those stages quickly and you'll have no intermediary non-dissolvable products. But as you use it more and more, it will start to take longer and become harder and harder for it to go through those two stages. For this reason, a method was designed to use two baths of fixing in order to get rid of those intermediary byproducts. Bath one does most of the work and bath two finishes it off to completion so that when you wash the film or paper, it doesn't need um, to be, there's nothing you need to do. The intermediary byproducts will dissolve away because they've been processed properly. Now, it's very simple to use a two bath method. So I do encourage you, if you want your prints or film to last, then do use this method because this is the best, most thorough method of fixing your prints and paper. Now, that's a lot of talking. So I'm sorry about that. But let me just give you the method 
to do this. So I have two baths here of fixer and this is a standard fixer and it has a capacity of 40 sheets of 10 by 8 paper. Bath 1 is going to do most of the work and then Bath 2 will finish off any work that Bath 1 hasn't managed to complete. I put my paper into Bath 1 for half the fixing time, 50% of the fixing time. Now, if we're fiber-based, this takes two minutes to fix fiber-based paper. So I would put my fiber-based paper in for one minute with constant gentle agitation. After one minute, I take the paper out and I put it into bath two and then I continue for a further minute. So for a total of two minutes for both baths and then I go into the wash. After 40 prints have gone through this system, I discard this bath because now it's a 40 print bath, isn't it? So I have to discard the bath. It's, it's finished. And then I move bath two to bath one and I make a fresh bath two. And then off I go again and I do another 40 prints through the two baths, half the time, just the same. And then I do it again. And the third time, once I've done that to completion, I discard both baths and I start with fresh. It's very simple. It's not really complex. It does take a little bit of management. You have to make some notes, but that's a good thing. In the darkroom, make lots of notes so you'll know where you are with your two bath fixing method. Now this method was designed many years ago and it's a very thorough fixing method. And you know if you're doing this, your prints will last. They will be good. They, the fixer contamination will be gone in the wash. So I do encourage you, if you want your prints to last, use this method. Now I've mentioned film as well, haven't I? Well, film's exactly the same. It's silver halides in an emulsion, just the same as paper. And it does exactly the same thing. And fixer works exactly the same way in film as it does in paper. So why not do it with your film too? Have two fixers for your film and use it for half the time in film one and half the time in film two. Remember, with film you fix for twice the clearing time. So once it's cleared in bath one, you switch it to bath two, your film, and then you do the same length of time again and then you wash your film. And this will guarantee that your film is archival and has no contaminants in it that can make it um, stain in the future. It's actually very simple, very easy, and it's fascinating how so many people actually don't do this when it's so easy to do. That is fixing in a nutshell. Proper, thorough fixing. Now, what do we do after that? How do we archivally wash our film or paper? The next stage in our process is thorough washing. We've thoroughly fixed, let's thoroughly wash. And to wash our print properly, we need to use water. Now, there are byproducts in that paper that we need to remove completely. So we need our water to be changing constantly. Now, the rule of thumb is that your water should be changing at a minimum of 12 times an hour or once every five minutes. And if you want to test your system of washing and see that your water is changing every five minutes, then drop some dye into the water, mix it up, and then turn on your system and watch to see it clear. And it should be out of there at five minutes at the slowest. You don't want it changing too fast either. Uh, you want to maintain a slow but constant movement of water from the print taking away, slowly taking away those byproducts and washing them out. It is a slow process washing a print, especially fiber based. Now RC prints wash very quickly. Look at the instructions on your RC prints to see just how quickly you can wash them. And if water is a problem to you in your area, then use RC prints because they will save you a lot of water. Fiber-based take a heck of a lot of washing to do a thorough job. 
Here I am in Scotland where there's enough water to sink a battleship. It's falling day after day, so I have no problems using water. The second thing about washing our print, and I'll just get a print now for us to look at. The second thing about washing our print is that if it's fibre-based, the fibres of the paper have soaked up some of those fixer contaminants and they are going to be very slow to come out of this paper. So there are ways we can help that happen and that is to use a wash aid. Now there are two wash aids that I would recommend and one is made with sodium sulphite and the other with sodium bicarbonate which is common baking soda. You use one teaspoon of sodium sulphite per litre or one teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate per litre. You just use one or the other, don't mix them together. So here I have a litre of water and I'm going to get one flat teaspoon, here's my teaspoons for the darkroom, remember we've seen these before, and I'm going to pop that flat teaspoon of sodium sulphite into this water here. And then I'm going to mix it up. Make sure it's fully dissolved. And then when it's fully dissolved, just pour it into a spare dish like this one. After fixing then, I put my print in my wash water for 10 minutes and this is just to get rid of the majority of that fixer byproducts. Make sure they come out. The emulsion will, will wash out very quickly but the fiber based paper will be very slow so it helps to get the majority of it out in that 10 minute wash. And then after 10 minutes in my wash water I then pop my print into this wash aid and I agitate it for 10 minutes in the wash aid. Now Ilford I think recommend five minutes. It, use whatever you're comfortable with. I am just giving you the information that I've used for decades and I know works. So I use 10 minutes in my wash aid. With the sodium bicarbonate it's a little bit quicker because it's working in a different way. I've written in my book how to use that. And then after the 10 minutes in the sulphite solution, we put it back into our wash water for another 10 minutes. And that will wash out the remaining um, problems we have from the fixer and the sodium sulphite. And at that point, I then give it a complete wash just as recommended by the manufacturer. So I still don't think it's completely contaminant free, but I've really helped it with this wash aid and I'm gonna give it now a thorough wash for whatever the recommended wash time is for that paper by the manufacturer. Give it a really good wash. Now with fiber based, I use an hour. Some people say 30 minutes, that's fine. Whatever you're comfortable with. I can only tell you what I've used for decades. So after an hour, I will take this out and we'll move on to our next stage. Now we've thoroughly washed our paper. We know that nothing inside the paper or the emulsion is going to attack our image. It's going to change our image in a negative way. But what we haven't done is protect it from the elements, from things in the air that can attack the silver that we're looking at that makes up the image. And this does happen. There are chemicals in the air, there is pollution that will change our image. So for archival permanence, the ultimate solution is to do something to the silver to protect it from those elements. Now, one obvious way is to tone it. And we've covered toning on the channel a couple of times. Sepia toning will protect the image, um, but Selenium toning is often used by people to protect their images from pollution. And this is Kodak Rapid Selenium, uh, Selenium Toner. And I use 1 plus 29 dilution for about five minutes with my print or 
my film. It will work with film too. It will protect the film um, and it changes the silver particles that we're looking at that make up the image into silver selenide which won't react as easily to pollution. So it's a very good way of doing it and there's very little change to the tone of the paper at that strength, 1 plus 29. So give it about four or five minutes in that toner with constant agitation. Now a word of warning, I've covered this before, selenium toner is dangerous, it is poisonous, so use it in a very well ventilated area. I prefer to do it outside where it's obviously um, lots of air around, it keeps it from my lungs and always wear gloves and wear protection for your eyes. Don't get this stuff on your skin. So it's not a friendly chemical in the darkroom, but it's very efficient at protecting our prints. There is a friendlier way of protecting our prints, and that is using this stuff here, Adox Adostab 2. Now this is very efficient at um, protecting our print or our film from damage from the atmosphere. Um, it's a simple 1 plus 19 dilution, and we agitate the film or print for just one minute in this. And then we don't need to wash it out. We just hang it up. We can squeegee it and we can let it dry. And that will um, provide great protection, archival protection for our print. So I hope this has been useful for you. This is really a workflow for those who are concerned about protecting their prints or films from the elements, from the fixer byproducts, and so on. Yes, it's more complicated than the simple just running it through your fixer and then washing it. But if you really want to make sure those prints and films are going to last a lifetime and beyond, this is what you need to do to protect them. It's actually a cathartic feeling doing this. I really like to know that I'm looking after these images as best I can, and that when I'm long gone, and even when my children are long gone, this will still be up on somebody's wall looking just as good as it does today. Thank you for watching. Thanks everybody for um, supporting my channel. Thank you to the people who buy my book. Thank you to my patrons. Thank you for giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. I really do appreciate it. So I look forward to seeing you on Friday.